Um, just the effort and the intensity um, that the guys played with. I thought we were physical. Um, obviously, the guys are just passionate to play. There's a certain energy and juice that you want to see when guys take the field. Um, that one felt different, you know. Uh, so that was uh, I was really excited about that. What Tanner is kind of first extensive play kind of uh, Really, being a pro is pro. You know, in this league, when anytime you're a backup, you don't get a lot of reps uh, in preparation for the game. And uh, when he had to go out there, obviously in that situation, uh, he was very aware of you know their runs, his understanding his fits on what he was going to be seeing from them, uh, and really good in the passing game as well. So when uh, when guys are ready like that in the course of the game and to kind of be thrown into the fire um, that quickly, that's a credit to him. So really excited and encouraged about that. Pete's talked about Daryl Taylor and kind of working for his strengths. You talked about it a little bit. How has he harnessed his energy and I think potential maybe the last couple of weeks? Um, you know, I think I would just say he settled in, you know, settled in with the, not necessarily the role because he's fully capable and we're asking him to do all the things that outside linebackers have to do uh, with rush and coverage and, and everything of that nature. Um, but sometimes it just takes, for, takes time for a guy to get settled in. He's, at, he's done that and got locked in uh, just on the details of the game. He's rushing really well, um, covering all the things that he's asked to do. He's doing it at a high level right now. So um, again, excited about that and just to continue to see the growth. Obviously just the physicality, um, the, phys the physicality, <laughs> the energy, the knockback, uh, the physical presence when he's in the middle, um, all those things, you know, obviously just uh, hate that for him. You know, such a great kid and bright future and a damn good football player. So he's going to definitely be missed. Right, what about middle linebackers? That's why you want to see the middle linebackers moving through in the middle rather than the middle. Yeah, it, it uh, he, like if the situation were that we were going to play somebody else and Mike to keep Cody where he was as, as a, you know, playing a jack or a dime linebacker, we could have definitely done that. You don't have to have the green dot in order to be the Mike, um, if that was the question. So it didn't, it's not pertaining to that position. It's just a normally common theme, but uh, we don't look at it in that kind of direction. He's always, Cody is always trained at the Mike position. So like in practice, um, you always want to have guys that can dual train. So anytime we would take Jordan out, um, out of some snaps, we would slide Cody on over. And obviously Tanner and other guys would get their reps at the jack of the dime spot. So. He's dual trained as well. You know, since he's been back, he's been at Mike, but he's dual trained in both positions as well. Where's Alexander Johnson been? Both spots as well. And he can do that because he's been in the system before. So there's a lot of carryover for him when he was uh, in Denver previously. What happens to him? Well, obviously, we haven't seen him on the game day, but what have you seen out of him in practice? Alexander? Yeah. Big, big physical backer, almost like a throwback. You know, so sometimes I almost wonder, you don't get the best version of him because when you're not in pads, because he's a downhill thumper, kind of old school backer, knocking around. Um, so he has all those things, a really good football awareness, high uh, football IQ guy. How do you see Tanner progress at the linebacker spot? Absolutely. I mean, that's what we love. That's why we love having him here. You know, his um, his awareness. A lot of times when guys work from back to front, you know, the run game part of it and understanding the fits is like the last thing that comes along. But he's been in tune with everything. You know, and solid blitzer, but really good in the fits. Understands the passing game at a high level. He has a similarity to Cody in that in that matter. Um, so again, he's done a really nice job of coming along. And um, at all, really, all the backer spots for us. It seemed, it seemed like you used Jonathan Abram in a bunch of ways the last few games. What have you seen from Jonathan Abram? How has his growth been? What about him? Do you know what you're doing? One, a lot of it is when a guy comes in, you want to not only are you teaching him the defense, you want to also see like what can he handle. You know, things can guys can play fast and be smart players, but if you start putting too many layers on him, different positions in the defense, and you slow him down, then you've done him a disservice. So a lot of it is kind of learning him all what he can handle, very much the plan that we had, you know, doing some things with Jamal in that kind of sense um, and, and moving him around as a nickel, a safety and, and all those types of things. So he's handled it well, you know, and continue to learn and grow and clean up some things along the way. Uh, but he's done a nice job. How did Daryl sort of handle it emotionally or whatever, kind of during that period when he maybe wasn't playing quite as much or producing quite as much? You know, I think it's uh, anybody that's competitive and Daryl is very, very competitive. Um, it could be a frustrating time, you know, but 
the thing is and a credit to is his growth through that process, you know, to figure things out. You can go one of two ways with young players as they develop. You could either baby guys and give them what they want, and then they turn into a terror to deal with, you know, when they become seven, eight, nine year veterans, or you help them grow through the process. And, and that's to his credit, he's handled that, where now he's a guy who can, again, he has a bright future to have a fantastic career and continue to grow. So um, it's definitely helped us to see him take off the way he has. And just to continue to see him get better is the goal, and I believe you will. At what point this year did you see it start to pick up for him in the scheme and that he'd started to have a click for a little bit more? Well, it was like the mid, I would say like that midway point of the season. It's hard to kind of pinpoint a game. Uh, but he's just, you kind of steadily, have steadily seen that, you know, for him. And plus, you know, um, there's always just a lot of things that's kind of moving and growing. And you see guys when they're young players as they continue to make their progress and growth throughout the course of the season. So it's midway point of the season, you saw him kind of make his stri- hit his stride. You've seen Cam Akers before, but is he running differently the last couple of weeks just based on the yards he's put up? I think he's always been a hard runner. Um, really great contact balance, um, unbelievable leg drive, uh, does a good job of lowering his uh, pad level when contact is coming. Uh, very talented runner um, is what I would say about him. Uh, if he seems different now, I think obviously we're coming off of, I think he had an Achilles last year, if I'm not mistaken. You know, sometimes with guys, it takes time to come off of injuries. Maybe if people feel that that was it, I'm not suggesting that. Um, Cause I think the kid is a heck of a player. So, but um, it could be something to it. You know, he could be feeling better. How do you mm-hmm. look different with Anchor? Um, I think a lot of it is the stuff that he has done, that Sean has done in his past, you know, with all the boot game, the wide zones and things of that nature. It's always part of the staple of, of, uh, of who they are in his offense. But um, definitely with Baker, you can see him run everything very fluidly, you know, handle all the boot games and, you know, the intermediate pass game and whatnot. So he can do all those things. He's a talented player. You've seen Bobby already this season, but what do you hope fans show Bobby when he takes the field on Sunday? They show him all the love and uh, appreciation that he so richly deserves. You know, I can't say enough for great things about Bobby. Um, it's one of those things where in the competition level, like you want to go after guys and compete and go win and kick butt and all, but there's a certain guys and he's one of them where you just have so ad- so much admiration for a player and respect for a guy. Um, you just want to see him do his very best, you know, and that's, and obviously he had a great game against us the last one out. And I hope all the, the 12s do that for him, you know, on Sunday, he deserves it and more. The way the schedule's set up, you mentioned you guys win, you guys coach come back here and watch that. No, I, I'll, <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll go home and watch it, but I'll probably be barricaded in the man cave and tell my wife and kids stay away from me. Just to let me see how this whole thing shakes down. we, we got to handle our business first and foremost. Do you have a talk with Conger this week about ball security on his returns? <laughs> uh, he knows. He already knows. I have a bigger conversation with Jonathan Abrams where we don't hit people in the same color uniform and cause fumbles on our teammates. as a bigger point of emphasis than me. Oh, the javelin. That was, that was one of the funniest things I've ever seen. Yeah, I, I told Jonathan during the game, if that was a javelin throw on the football field, he, he would have been impaled. <laughs> it's just the way that ball hit him, just catch a damn thing and go the other direction with it. That would have been nice. What impact do you guys have on you guys' ability to rotate safeties from Jamal to Ryan to Tease, David? You know, uh, I got to give a ton of credit to Carl Scott and Sean Desai. They've been uh, incredible getting those guys uh, developed and trained and up to speed on everything. And we're fortunate as a coaching staff that those guys are really smart football players that we've had in. Um, Quandre is a football savant, you know, and Jamal is really sharp and Ryan Neal's been with us. Um, you know, and obviously it's going on down the line with being able to bring guys in and kind of get them uh, trained and get them ready to go. So great credit to the coaches and credit to the players on that where, you know, even with all the injuries that we've had, um, to be able to get guys on the same page. And Quandre, when he's on the field, he's an extension of the coaching staff. So. With all the safeties are responsible for, how difficult is the job that T's and Jonathan had? They control, the safeties control everything. When it comes to, you know, any of the checks and, and things of that nature that we got to get in and out of, um, the recognition of routes and splits and all those things, they control all those things. The Mike linebacker may make the huddle call and set the front, um, but in terms of um, rotations and all those things, the, the safeties are the ones that handle a lot of it. They, have, they bear a lot of responsibility. And uh, like I said, they do a great job of it. Anything else? Thank you. Thank you, everybody.